following is a presentation of TFNN. The P Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour with me, your humble, lovable, and squeezably soft. Once more into the breach do we go, dear friends, today. And uh, what do we got going on here? Well, man, it's the third day. You think that we can go up three days and close at the highs in three days? Uh I particularly didn't want this. I kind of wanted a sideways day here, maybe an update tomorrow uh, to continue it. I kind of, I kind of know why the market's going up. We're going to talk about some of the reasons why. Uh, that uh, I was pretty sure we had some cash going in, but my guess is that maybe we've got a lot of this coming in. Um, now I'm trying to figure out what's going on in the short term and the long term. I've got. What, four positions in the Tech Insider, their longer term positions. We added one last week. I love all of them like uh, they were my children. Uh, all of them seem to be doing rather good. Uh, one is kind of like a biotech. One day I'm just going to wake up and uh, it's going to be up through uh, maybe 30% or something. It's just one of those kind of stocks. Not doing much now. But uh, the rest uh, off to the races up big today. I'm going to have to sit on my hands for these for a while, maybe through uh, the elections, maybe through the end of the year. But I think I've got some pretty good positions. Uh, they threw every kind of egg and uh, raw vegetable and rotting vegetable uh, at them over the last week. And uh, they persisted to act incredibly well. So I'm very happy with my long term. Uh, it's the very short term that I'm kind of ambivalent. And uh, I think even the way I said it to John Logan this morning was, agnostic uh, and that is that i know i can get a little bit of a pullback here we blew through 2070 on the s p cash and that's got to tell you a lot uh, volume 2.47 billion shares as we start the show um my thought was that if we blew through 2070 we're probably going to the highs on this move so maybe we could have a few more days of that so uh, just a thought is uh, always though we like uh, to kind of meet at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. Wow, something broke there. Hope everybody's okay in the uh, engineering booth. Uh, but uh, as always, uh, you know, we can probably talk about a lot of different things. Uh, it is tough. 2093, though, uh, they say that the uh, truth is in the price, and it is hard to uh, argue with 2093 when we were at uh, 1992 uh, just a few days ago. Uh, as I said on Monday, I think early during the morning show with Larry Presidento, I asked the question, will it be days before this uh, is all forgotten or will it be a week? I think the answer is days. I think I'm going to, I now in retrospect with my 2020 vision, I'm going to say it was days. I thought maybe it would be a week. I would kind of like it to be a little bit slower and more uh, uh, sure. But, uh, you know, are we back in the doldrums? I've had a couple of people email me today. Question is, are we going to be back and doing the same thing we were doing uh, a week uh, ago before the Brit exit, and that is in this narrow trading range. And the answer, I suspect, is for a little while, yes. Uh, but we have some big announcements, um, or uh, big news, and we're going to talk about that in a second. Uh, but first, uh, we always got to have a little bit of history. And it's all just a little bit of history repeating. And we have uh, Franklin Roosevelt uh, on this day in 1934 tells his cabinet that he will name the notorious stock manipulator Joseph Kennedy, uh, stock manipulator and Jew hater, uh, the first chairman of the United States Exchange Commission, uh, kind of uh, getting the Fox 
uh, to uh, guard the hen house, was it? Anyway, he says that he knows all the tricks in the trade and uh, says that uh, uh, it's uh, like setting a wolf to guard a flock of sheep because he was so good at stock manipulation. Um, of course, this was, of course, the stepping stone. He thought uh, the next step was to go to and be the ambassador to England, uh, where he was more than happy to tell everybody we should stay out, that Hitler was a great guy, and as long as he was killing Jews, there was no problem. Kind of putting an end to his idea that he would be the president after Roosevelt. Uh, and a lot of people thought he would be. Uh, some, like me, think that maybe uh, the problems with his sons, maybe almost uh, Shakespearean, in uh, the sins of the father being put on the sons. Uh, but uh, just one way of looking at it on this day in 1934. Uh, making history today is Mobley. Uh, man, this thing uh, took off like a rocket. Let me get a uh, current quote here. Uh, the point, though, I wanted to be uh, making up here, and it's up 11 percent. Uh, the news was rather dubious. I'm not going to say that it was any big deal out here, uh, but uh, let me see here. I'm hoping I can show this on the screen for some reason. Uh, da, 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 big, uh, where is it out here? Uh, there it is right there. Uh, M-B-L-Y. Uh, look at it. Um, I wanted to show this. Uh, you could have, before yesterday, taken a look at the short interest on it. You would have found that the short interest, uh, uh, the days to cover, that, that means on the volume, average volume for the last 30 days, how much, how many days would it cover if everybody had to buy back the shares that were short in Mobileye? And uh, this is one of the worst offenders out here. 17 days to cover. They almost had one out of every sh four shares we're short. Um, if you want to take a beating like a red-headed stepchild or a seal on the, uh, on the ocean flows, ice flows, uh, all you have to do is get into stocks like this that have 17 days to cover, that have 25% uh, of all their short interest uh, that, you know, one out of four shares. And you just need one spark of good news. This, I think, on an average day and an average stock, on something that maybe had three days to cover, would have probably been worth a buck. But uh, it was worth everything because a massive amount of people were on the wrong side of this trade. Before you short, and I would say friends, do not let uh, others short super high short interest stocks. Uh, it uh, almost eventually will get everybody out of it before it does fall. We've talked about that phenomena before. Once everybody knows about it, you are basically in a short uh, squeeze and probably three-fourths of the shares are going to be held by people that are, have a two-year horizon. My guess is that you will not la uh, last through short squeezes like this. When we come back, uh, we're going to talk about uh, Hershey. How expensive is it, and what does that tell us about what's going on in the market here? I'm going to tell you how expensive it is. It's real expensive, but we'll put some numbers to it when we come back. But, uh, man, somebody's paying up. We'll be back in a minute. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software 
software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video. Tiger TV, exclusively at TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Techno Mental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen live during those shows and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Hey, Take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. And uh, a very interesting day out here. I was talking to Andy Heck uh, briefly before the show. He's going to be doing his quarterly roundup show today at uh, five o'clock and of course um i asked my secretary what she thought of uh andy and uh, what other people thought of andy himself oh well he's very popular the sportos and motorheads geeks bloods wastoids dweebies they all adore if they think he's a righteous dude i think he's a righteous dude too but uh anyway very interesting discussion maybe we'll get into some of the stuff going on later today in that but uh, catch his show at five o'clock uh, we had some other very interesting discussions i just didn't have time to get with it but one of the things he did bring up uh, i will talk about later in the show and i probably have not talked talked about it as much and uh more of a risk reward uh thing that maybe i don't bring up uh, quite as uh, much as uh, i should so we'll talk about it uh what else oh hershey Hershey, of course, uh, popped up fairly strong uh, today, a uh, buyout offer. And the thing was that kind of interesting to see these buyouts and the buyout offer coming today. Uh, it kind of, the news finally leaked, and one of the reasons why it came out midday was uh, the Hershey board got a phone call or investor relations, and they just uh, halted the stock because it was starting to move around a bit. Uh, but... Uh, Going into this morning, Hershey may be one of the most expensive stocks on the stock exchange. Part of that had been discussions about whether they were a buyout candidate or not. So I didn't know if there was that much more to actually be had. But going in, uh, you know, probably 18, 19 is about, for a price earning multiple, is about as high as you want. Some people, uh, well, if you look backwards, it's at least 25 uh, if you uh, talk about the price it's turning at now, uh, you're probably talking about 28 or 29. Uh, probably one of the most expensive stocks in the market. And you have to think about why someone would pay that kind of money. Same thing uh, goes back to Microsoft. And the answer is uh, most of these people are thinking that 
why we may have another six months or nine months or so before interest rates start going up, that it doesn't matter how expensive it is if the interest is free. Uh, of course, uh, Mona Lee is going to do a lot of stuff like uh, move to Hershey, Pennsylvania uh, and move their headquarters there. Not exactly sure why, but uh, they're basically throwing in some other things to make the Hershey people happy about it. Uh, but um, I, I think when we look at something like LinkedIn or we see something like Hershey that seems rather expensive at the time, if these things just kind of mildly grow, and interest rates continue, I think we can continue to think that maybe these super high buyouts do continue in the market. So just a thought out there. Um, uh, one of the other things we had last night while I was uh, talking uh, on Tom's show uh, and sitting in for him was the, um, the uh, stress test for the banks. Um, you know, energy, uh, financials, kind of the weak uh, sisters of the uh, sectors out here. But uh, I always take pause before I short individual stocks. I've told people before that I won't show Goldman. I won't short uh, Goldman Sachs because I've tried before and randomly uh, and almost uh, in unpredictably, they'll have some self-serving article or some announcement of a bizarre buyback that never happens. Um, they've got a thousand ways to jigger their stocks. It is very tough unless you have a market that is in free fall to make money on Goldman Sachs. Uh, but almost all these company, or companies did have and passed the uh, uh, FOMC's uh, de declaration of how many shares that they want to buy back. And they'll still have the amount of cash on hand that uh, they want them to have. But uh, there's two pages out here. If you are going to short one of these stocks, just be aware, um, at least m in my thought, that you would want to have a much wider uh, stop in these for the day that for some reason they start buying or they say they're going to buy a lot more. Um, most of these times, in fact, only about 10% of shares that are ever declared in a share buyback ever get bought. But uh, one of the easiest things to do, of course, is hop in to your own uh, stock and run it. Uh, combine that with some press releases. And uh, you know what? It's pretty easy to slam somebody kind of like mobily. So just make sure that uh, what you have going on out there, um, we've got another slide here with Capital One's going to has the ability to buy it. 2.5 billion dollars uh, and uh, 1.5 what uh, discover financial 1.95 billion we're actually talking some money here and if it's going to 60 does that mean it uh, and it was going to get over to 40 does that mean it only goes to 45 or 48 i think you can make some cases in there that maybe these things are going down but maybe we want to moderate just how far they can go down uh, if they have still bullets left in those buyback guns. Just a thought out there. Uh, for me, eh, I try to, I guess that's a discussion I was uh, talking with Andy about earlier. The question I always have is, is there anything, is there any lower hanging fruit than uh, somebody like Goldman Sachs that can uh, um, absolutely move their stock price at will for a while? And do I want to sit through that time Why they are thimble rigging the markets? And uh, for the most part, um, I don't know. I'm not trying to talk you out of shorting these. i just saying, are you absolutely sure there's not any other lower hanging fruit? These sectors do look horrible, but uh, I haven't seen a whole lot more in the energy sector. Maybe I'd be looking at the energies a little bit more out here, but just, just me. Uh, as I said right now, I don't have anything short-term uh, really to speak of and uh, kind of agnostic for the next few days. I want to see what happens after this long three-day weekend. Uh, other things we've got going on uh, in the news. wanted to take a look at Microsoft. Do I still have time? MSFT. Kind of a weird article out this morning. 
and uh, I apparently it had leaked a couple of days ago. Uh, Microsoft up on lighter volume. Um, we talked where I thought that this $49 level would pretty much act as some level of support. You went through it with about the same amount of energy, 50 million shares to 48, and I'm going to call that a tie. Um, as it's gone back up, it's been kind of light. Uh, but the news article I saw today that made me start to think a little bit more was that uh, Microsoft has been very successful so far. Uh, with their Surface line of laptops and tablets. What we now see is they're going to get into all-in-ones that are those big 27, 34, and maybe even a 50-inch uh, computer, all-in-one thing, all in the monitor. You just took up a keyboard and mouse, and you're ready to go. Uh, they're all going to be sold under the Surface brand, and we're probably going to see those somewhere around September uh, or early September or maybe uh, first part of October. But uh, branching off into hardware. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter. And if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Has the current market volatility continued to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. I want to go through some of the stocks that we talked about uh, over the last week uh, as we were saying that some of these things look like they were giving some fairly decent signals in the market. And uh, what on Tuesday we showed just how many stocks had tested lower uh, or had tested lows on significantly lighter volume on my scanner. We went through some of those, but um, and 
And on Tuesday, we talked about all the Gartley patterns. I mean, uh, just an absolute ton of uh, them that look like they had made some kind of significant low in the market. Um, to me, that's much more important than maybe all the indicators in the world uh, is when the uh, plurality of stocks uh, talk with one voice. Uh, and one of the things we talked about is what I thought of the uh, market for and the possibility that biotechs had possibly bottomed. Uh, we looked at uh, Edwards Life Science, I think, on Monday. I liked this pattern. We talked about the Wyckoff pattern, the um, initial move uh, with a big candle, lots of volume. It slowly comes back. You buy the retrace when it comes in there with that light volume. Uh, Edwards Life Sciences, a very good example of that. On the 4th of April, it uh, took off uh, like a rocket with 9 million shares. It slowly moved all the way back into that gap. I would have liked this thing maybe to fill up a little bit more on it. But uh, when you've got 9 million shares getting touched by 2 million shares, very tough to see that, the, that there's uh, many sellers, if any sellers, left. You get a nice little rally off of that. Um, you may still get a little bit of movement back here, but uh, keep an eye on some of those biotechs. I think that there's uh, some very interesting movement in that. Uh, we also talked about Gilead in this uh, market. I need some interlude music while I'm waiting for the Internet to cooperate. Um, another one out here and... The, the reason I love this one, as we discussed it, was the February 2nd low at 81.89. Had, that had 37 million shares. You go into it with 12 million shares, you bounce, the market gets kind of disgusting, comes back down. But you still never, ever got that 37 million shares. Guess what you're getting today uh, and kind of yesterday, and that is a close back into that lower trading range. This $81, $82 level on Gilead looks like it could develop into a better bottom uh, not saying buy it today, but uh, as we go through next week, certainly looks like some of these are hanging out here and uh, some of the low-hanging fruit, I suspect. Let's see what else is here. J.P. Morgan, um, we talked about this one a bit. Let me see if I can't get this one into uh, what I was looking at. Uh, yeah, take a look quick here. Come on, come on, come on. The Internet's so slow today. Maybe we can, there we go. Oh, I thought I went. Let's draw it. Come on, Internet. Okay, there we go. J.P. Morgan. Um... This was, and I think we talked about this, some of these three gap plays in reverse. This one was rather ugly, so I'm not going to point it. This is the textbook version to look at multiple gaps down. But uh, you can get them, and again, they fill back up fairly quickly. Um, J.P. Morgan Chase had this huge gap down. Uh, if you are looking for... Um, proof that financials are weak, let me put it that way. Uh, J.P. Morgan looks to me like one of the bigger ones. You gap down with 41, what is that, 44 million shares on the 24th. Uh, we are back up into this range, about 13.3 million shares. Uh, certainly wouldn't be long this thing now, so I can understand a lot of people uh, deciding that uh, a lot of these financials look rather weak. I'm not going to defend them, uh, just uh, their ability to buy their shares back and gin up at least a couple of days until they run me out of my stop, uh, the ability to do so. Uh, one of the other ones we liked was uh, KBR. This thing looked like it was coming down. Uh, unfortunately, it had a little bit more volume, a little pop up on that one. Uh, McCormick um, wanted to see how this one actually went through the previous highs. Um, I, you know, another day, uh, another decent move, certainly volume. I would have liked to see maybe a little bit more volume. You want to see how this one closes by the end of the day. But uh, with Hershey's being bought out, uh, others out here, uh, the rumor is that McCormick is uh, on the block. 2.2 uh, million shares on April 4th. 
at $100.91 uh, was the mark that I was looking at. Today, it's 1.6 million shares, solidly through here with some volume. Um, and maybe Andy in his uh, discussions with Tom today, or maybe in his five o'clock hour, will bring up why so many of these food companies are now uh, the bells of the ball in M and A. But um, it's been, you know, it's been pretty strong. We've got uh, Monsanto. I don't know if that deal ever closes, but it seems like everybody and their dog wants to buy somebody else in the food or ag agriculture space right now. One of the things, if you are kind of bearish out here. Uh, that you don't like is uh, Monster Worldwide, of course, the uh, uh, hiring company. But um, being down at these kind of lows and getting kind of blown apart. But uh, what you do have to like is the incredibly light volume. Um, I'm going to have to watch one, this one very closely. But uh, this thing spiked down on February 11th with 10 million shares to $2.43. It's got down to... Uh, $2.13 with 1.5 million shares two days ago. Uh, light volume up here today. But uh, this thing continues to fool around, go sideways with incredibly light volume around that February 11th low. Um, you know, you've got that gap at four bucks, which is a nice trade. And this takes me back to our discussion with Tom, uh, with. Uh, Andy that I had before the show, but I probably do not talk about a great deal. A lot of times when people call me up and ask me what they think about a stock or something, um, I probably should have a disclaimer, and that is I'm a greedy, greedy bastard, and I want a hell of a lot of money out of the plays I have. I tend to be rather distracted uh, when there is a little money at stake, and probably an equal amount of risk. I want uh, as little risk as possible, and I want a god-awful amount of reward. So a lot of times when people talk to me about particular stocks or, uh, in his case, commodities, and I just kind of, yeah, yeah. Could it go to 27? Yeah, yeah. It, it, it's not that I'm not there. It's just when I'm looking at it there, I want to look at two things. I want to see a very little amount of risk. I want to know that I'm wrong extremely quickly, and I'm not interested in making a dollar or two in the next day or two. I want to make 100% on a option play. I want to make 100% on an equity play, maybe over the next three or six or nine months. I want some big money on the opposite side of it. So if I act a little bit uh, unplus by everybody's call, it's not that your call is bad or anything else. It's just I'm greedy. So I'll leave it at that. Greedy, greedy, greedy. Be back in a minute. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock in option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. Today, many commodities are trading at relative lows. And now you can take advantage with EvaBank's new limited-time, five-year, market-safe currency comeback CD. This indexed and U.S. dollar-denominated CD offers 100% principal protection and is based on the equally rated performance of currencies of Australia, Canada, Chile, Mexico, and South Africa. These five countries are especially rich in commodities and the respective currencies are poised to do well should commodity prices begin to recover. Keep in mind that no APY or periodic rate of interest is paid on the CD. Don't miss out on this innovative new financial opportunity. 
CDs must be opened and funded by the upcoming July 14th deadline. To apply online and learn more about the CD, including product terms and disclosures, visit everbank.com forward slash TFNN now. This advertisement is sponsored content. Everbank is a member FDIC. TFNN is excited to offer a brand new piece of market scanning software unlike anything the industry has ever seen. John Logan and his team have spent years developing their market profile tools to finally be able to release the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. And right now, you can get a two-week trial absolutely free just by visiting TFNN.com and providing us your name and email address. The TAS Profile Scanner Plus is the premier market profile-based scanner in the industry, powered by the acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner is a standalone desktop software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Within three minutes of signing up, you can have the software downloaded and running on your computer with a complete roadmap of market indicators and inflection points to trade off using the TAS Profile Scanner Plus. Sign up today and try this amazing piece of software by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. And make sure you uh, hang on for the last segment. I've got something kind of special. Somebody made a comment in the den uh, during uh, Basil's show. Or actually, I think it was called into Basil's show. I think it was Scott from... Clearwater, and uh, kind of hit a nerve with me, and I kind of remembered something, and I'm going to play it to, to go away. I will be gone tomorrow and on Tuesday. My subscribers will continue to get the newsletter, and I'll keep an eye on the stocks. But uh, even mere mortals like me need rest and relaxation, so I'm going to try to extend the vacation a few days out here while keeping a, a little eye cracked on the positions that we have. So I'm going to kind of send you off with that, uh, but uh, hang on to it. There's a, I found something, and it uh, kind of hit me, and then it, I started to grow, and I started to think about how uh, many things in it applied to traders, and there aren't uh, many things in this vein that do that uh, I will present in that last five minutes of the show this week. Uh, to, to what else is going on? Priceline, I want to see how this thing did. Uh, huge move off the lows. My guess, of course, is that this one would have done a great deal better, but it is much higher. I couldn't bet that the with a 52-48 vote that they would leave. In retrospect, one of the best bets out here probably would have been being short Priceline with some uh, puts on uh, last Thursday's election results. Uh, I would have loved to have them. I just didn't have enough confidence one way or the other. I was much more happy to wait and react to the move uh, from the uh, British exit uh, than participate in it. And, you know, there's a lot of people that are always saying, well, the stock's going to here, or the stock's going to there. My question to you to, would be today is without the Turkey bombing, where do you think Priceline would be today? Um, a lot of people like to ignore politics uh, or world events, uh, that everything is in the stock chart. I was always telling Andy before the show, um, one of the favorite quotes of uh, Jesse Livermore, people who told him that the charts were the uh, all, be all, end all, was that every chart uh, or every sunken ship had a chart. Um, so I'm not married to the chart i do know that it does tell me a great deal of things uh, but uh, the underlying fundamentals of a market are probably also something um, you know you had the disruption it's probably going to bring uh, less travelers to europe uh, but uh, do you think that uh, anything besides a bombing could probably even bring a lot more or a lot fewer um, people out here but uh, on a week like this, we get to see the wheat separated from the chaff. For anybody that grew up in the Midwest like me, they know what that actually means. The good stuff from the bad stuff. 
Uh, and uh, today that you can't see Priceline rally out here probably tells you a great deal more. As I said, I'm looking for lower hanging fruit than maybe some of the other stuff with the power, uh, maybe the power to buy, uh, bring a great deal of stuff back. Uh, being short something like Priceline and a $1,200 stock, to me, uh, if I'm just kind of whiteboarding it or like a, the sports guys do, they draw all the symbols and say, hey, this guy's going over here. How many people are actually going to be short with cash a $1,200 or $1,300 stock? And the answer isn't a great deal. Uh, that is always one thing that makes an option play on these super uh, high dollar stocks very appealing to me. Uh, if people in my newsletter will probably say, well, you know, why does he want to go short the stock that's uh, two, three hundred bucks? One of the reasons is that a lot of people, I'm going to call them the weak hands, don't tend to throw and short $1,300 stocks because, uh, of course, to them, they short a $30 stock that goes down two bucks. There are some reason much more happier than doing a $1,300 stock that goes down 30 bucks. And it, I don't know why it is. You know, I guess we do. We live in a world that uh, ends in 99 cents. And there's kind of that psychological idea behind it. But uh, to me, when we talked about short squeezes, a lot of times, uh, like Google, we'll look at it in a minute, uh, those stocks have a lot more appeal to me generally when they are weak uh, because I know there aren't a lot of uh, Johnny-come-lately retail clients playing at home that will be extremely weak hands when the market actually cracks. Probably one of the reasons why you saw Priceline was in the right sector, but at the same time, uh, you don't want a ton of shorts under there that are always going to have to cover. The limited bounce, uh, the continued terrorism, uh, to me, I look at something like Priceline and think there could be a, a better argument to be had for maybe shorting this kind of stock and maybe the entire ones. Let's take a quick look at Expedia. Although I do think that it, it will probably be at least into next week before any of these develop. Expedia looked a little bit better out here, uh, but still uh, some fairly si significant volume down. It bounced off its uh, gap. So this, is not a, this was not a bad time to buy it if you were looking at a standard Wyckoff uh, pattern. You had the big gap up on the 11th of February. It did so with 11 million shares. You came into it with two, uh, 3.2 million shares, and you moved up. Now, $100 stock, can you imagine people shorting it? Uh, and the answer is yes, people will still short $100 stocks. Uh, but um, that is probably why you see a little bit more weakness in something like Priceline than you do in Expedia. And uh, just a thought out there when I'm looking at different ones. Uh, doesn't mean that it's a bad position. Um, I just normally I go into this mode where I put on my trader hat and go, okay, what is the other guy going to do? How is he going to think? Where am I going to find the people that are more likely to hold the short when it goes against them? Um, Expedia probably less so. And my guess is that there are a lot more uh, retail, as a percentage, retail uh, uh, traders short Expedia than something like Priceline actually shorting the equity instead of shorting uh, or and using options out there. There's still a nice reason to move options, but, uh, you know, there's a saying in, uh, in uh, Las Vegas. And that is that if you sit down at a table with a bunch of people that don't know much how to play poker, they play like donkeys. And unfortunately, them playing reckless uh, and almost insane is a, uh, a good reason many times to get knocked out of a tournament very early, uh, even though you did all the right things. Uh, playing against a madman, uh, always a tough thing. I tend to like stocks where I have less people that are, uh, and let me put it this way, predictable, and just a random and randomizing thought here as uh, we close out this segment. When we come back, my broader thoughts, uh, because uh, yeah, 
Somebody said that uh, trading is 90% mental and 10% technical. I think there's part of that. But uh, one of the few things I found that really applies to trading, as I said from earlier in Basil's show today, we'll do it in the next segment. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of The Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under Trading Newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And as we're back up 24 and a half points on the S&P cash volume, 2.8 billion shares. Uh, going into the, the end of the quarter, and man, are they ready to put some lipstick on this pig. Let's put some lipstick on this pig. Well, they are, and uh, they certainly are putting on the window dressing, as it is called. Quick uh, question from one of our uh, listeners out here. Uh, do you think $90 by September for Checkpoint? The answer is it could. Uh, I certainly would like to see this lower gap at about 80, uh, 74 tested first, though. Energy did kind of move uh, up just a little to the downside out here. Does it have to come back there? No, but again, I'm a greedy bastard. I want that 74 in there. I want to know a low is in there, and I would probably even much rather see the January 20th low tested out here at 71.64 so that I know that my uh, rear end is covered, as they say, uh, watch your six, and you can't if it's still behind you. Uh, but uh, that 7164 is kind of decent volume out here, and that would bother me. 
As we said earlier in the show, um, I heard a discussion, and it kind of made me think of this poem from uh, Richard uh, Kipling. And uh, I think we'll just uh, go ahead and start into it. Let me get this up here, out here, and this is it. But it applies to trading a lot. If you can keep your head when all about you are losing theirs and blaming it on you. If you can trust yourself when all men doubt you, but make allowance for the doubting too. Or being lied about, don't deal in lies, or being hated, don't give way to hating. And yet don't look too good nor talk too wise. If you can dream but not make dreams your master, if you can think but not make thoughts your aim, if you can meet with triumph and disaster and treat these two impostors just the same, or bear to hear the truth you've spoken, twisted by knaves to make a trap for fools, or watch the things that you've given your life to broken and stoop and build them up again with worn out tools. If you can make one heap of all your winnings and risk it in one turn of pitch and toss and lose, and start again at your beginnings, never breathe a word about your loss. If you can force your heart and your nerve and your sinew to serve your turn long after they are gone, and so hold on when there's nothing in you except the will which says to them, hold on. If you can talk with crowds and keep your virtue or walk with kings, but never lose the common touch. If neither foes nor loving friends can hurt you, if all men count with you, but none too much. If you can fill the unforgiving minute with 60 seconds worth of distant run, yours is the earth and everything that's in it, and which is more, will be a man. My son. Anyway, um, there was a lot of things in that that made me think about trading, uh, made me think about especially the story that we talked about, I think last week, in reminiscence of a stock operator. And... Uh, the thought uh, and the discussion is uh, that one guy came into a trading room and said, you know, I can snap the uh, stem of a wine glass at 20 paces uh, with my pistol. And uh, the gentleman responded back to him, you know, can you do that when the uh, wine glass is shooting back at you? And that's the real question of a trader out there. And uh, the really the first paragraph out there, if you can keep your head above you, and about you when all are losing theirs, as we saw in the Brexit of the last week, there is some money to be made. And uh, you know when you do that, and the first time you do it as a trader, I always knew that I could make money in this game. We'll see you next Wednesday. Same bat channel, same bat time. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters. You're watching Tiger TV.